you can see a major position over here and right alongside it oh, wow look at that this looks like a whole freaking dashboard part Time to get going. Ray comes walking over and points out a German canteen. It's very rotten, but how awesome is this? We just arrived and apparently this was just laying alongside the road. So that is a good sign. Welcome to a brand new metal detecting adventure. It's great to be back out in the woods. And actually in this episode, we are returning to an abandoned German airfield that we have visited last year. And that was definitely a fruitful trip. So we have returned with reinforcements. We have brought our sifters. We're gonna set those up, return to the dump side of this uh, airfield. And later on, we're also gonna do some metal detecting. It's good to be back. We already have the first piece of Luftwaffe porcelain. That was the German Air Force. You can still see a partial eagle. There would have been a swastika in a year on there as well. What do we have more here on the surface? This is a soap dish. And uh, this is a part of a German buttercup. It's made from Bakelite. <laughs> yeah, I think the sifter is going to serve us well today. And there we go. That's the start of our new metal detecting adventure. Let's see what the sifter can do. Apparently this uh, Luftwaffe dump is way bigger than we thought because there's relics everywhere on the surface here and Rob even pointed out a German drinking cup at the freaking surface guys look at this that's very neat my buddy Raoul is digging a hole right there and he just pulled out this inkwell and there's still blue ink in there that color is super bright still that's that's really interesting Ray just pulled these artifacts out of the sifter and we found these before these are cigarette filters there's like some sort of small rocks in them. You can see the, there's some holes in there as well. Interesting moment right here. We're finding more and more medical bottles over here. And I just pulled this leather piece out. There's a button on it and there's some holes in there. And I think they use this to um, wrap around an arm and stop the blood from going through that arm if the soldier sustained a severe injury, for example. So that's a really cool find actually. Again, more and more medical stuff. I think we're onto a really good spot here. My buddy Raoul just dug up this. Well, he says it's an ashtray, apparently. And probably this, this slit here is where they could put the cigarette on. So that's cool. I've never seen an ashtray in that shape. And what also just came from the sifter, Ray pointed out this black piece of Bakelite. And actually, if you look properly, you can see grooves in this part. And it's from an LP plate to play music. Look at that, I just pulled this piece out and the eagle and swastika are clearly visible. It's just a piece, but you know, with these clear stamps, that's history right there, guys. All right, I was called over by my buddies, Jeff and Rob, and they told me that they found some sort of pin for on the shoulder board, she said. I'm not sure, so, see the pin? Yeah, a clear pin on the back. Clear red color as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what type of uh, like rank insignia this was. I think it's fabric. There's fabric around it, the, yeah, red. the, the red stuff is fabric. Huh. Well, it's definitely hard work here and we're turning over a lot of pieces of porcelain. Definitely not all of them are marked, but I just found another one. <laughs> yes, there we go. 1942, that's in good condition still, right? I mean, yeah, I think, well, it's still not a complete plate, but the stamp is going to be complete on this one, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at that one. There we go, 1938 it says. Again, Luftwaffe porcelain. Yeah, Very nice, nice. yeah. We're moving a lot of dirt here and there's multiple things to be shown here. First of all, I think this is a Bakelite weapon oil yeah. bottle. Yeah, weapon oil. Right. There's clear writing on the bottom. Very 1940, yeah. yeah. What do we have more? They found a Luftwaffe spoon and there is Obviously an eagle on it and that is the uh, Luftwaffe marking, FLUV. 
Um, I think Jeff told me he also found a buttercup. Let me just make my way to his bags. Ah, uh, yeah, so they found porcelain pieces. This is the buttercup, the bottom of it, the top part is missing. All right, I think it's time to do some metal detecting. Let me just uh, give you a short wrap up of the stuff that we found here. Quite some medical bottles actually. Um, and obviously a lot of porcelain. You can see all of this really neat Luftwaffe porcelain stamped. I also found this perfume bottle. They're still riding on there. Kulmisch Wasser, it says. That's a really famous German perfume. And uh, let me see, there's more over here. Yeah, that's neat. Many pieces there all together. Take off. Well, I got my first interesting find with the metal detector. Just dug it out. Look at this. It's a rifle clip. And I've never found this particular type before. And the funny thing is, this is not German. This is not American. I think this is actually Italian uh, from the rifle called Carcano. So, well, that's the first one for me. And again, like last time, we found evidence of the Italian troops that served alongside the German soldiers here. This will be even more evidence. We just stumbled upon a World War II position. And as you can see, Rob is digging there on the side. And we are both finding relics. Um, so first of all, I found some batteries. Um, and then in the dugout, I found another live round and another one of those weird rifle clips, which I believe they are Carcano Italian. So maybe we should move our sifters into this dugout because let me just take you along here so that you can hear what I hear. There is signals everywhere here. What's also interesting to point out, I already found two tags here. One says Uncla, I'm not sure what that means. And one is a number. So we should really look carefully here. Yeah, you can basically really dig everywhere here. I just dug this wall out and there's rifle rounds everywhere here and glass. I'm not sure what that was. That's crazy. Yeah, so the news has spread as you can see. I'm not alone anymore. Everybody's helping out. And since there's signals everywhere, we, we can also just dig everywhere. And the next thing that I just pulled out here, this is a part of a Mauser K98K a bayonet scabbard. So let's see if the other part is still here. Unfortunately, it's broken, but it's still a very cool find. So we're finding more and more of these colored tags. And actually, this one has a date on it. It says 15644, probably 1944. And I just dug this one out. And the bottom word says Flugzeug, which means airplane in German. And the top word I cannot read. But uh, since we are digging on the perimeter of a military airfield from the German Luftwaffe, it does make sense that we're finding uh, aircraft related relics. And right in this edge here, I just noticed this. And I'm quite sure that this is a German flare casing, but let's find out together. And there we go. Let's see if we can make that riding clear. I think oh, we can. Dear. Look at that. 1942 is clear as day, guys. Here are the finds again. I'm not sure what this is, but they call this a normal graph. And it almost, it almost looks like they use this to like draw letters on some surface. And also I found this airplane part. It says Berlin there in the middle of the screen. We found more and more of those name tags. Look at this one. It says Staffel. I think that meant crew in German. Staffel means squadron, which is a unit of military aircrafts and their aircrew. It usually consists of 12 to 24 aircrafts and is sometimes divided into three or four flights. We are not sure, but maybe these colored tags were used to locate or move troops on a tactical board. Oh yeah, and I found the missing pieces of the puzzle of the K98K bayonet scabbard. So as you can see, the pieces fit together perfectly. And uh, yeah, unfortunately the bayonet is not here. But cool to find this uh, complete scabbard. I think the guys found something pretty. So uh, let's go over to them, see what they found. Jeff over there in the back just found some cockpit parts from a German airplane. We got those right here. And there's actually some riding on this as well. 30 kilohertz. Yeah, maybe radio, radio frequency, some radio material then. 
Right, let's make my way towards Jeff again because he's killing it with those cockpit parts. We just found, what is this, like a computer or a clock from the cockpit? The of the cockpit, yeah. Wow, oh, well, the glass part is still intact. We don't yeah. really see any numbers, right? No. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow, look at that. I thought it did thing now. This looks like a whole freaking dashboard part. This is some sort of meter. There's numbers there on the on the edge. And there is more in there. There we go. It even says Luxembourg and Oslo. Radio frequencies, I believe. Probably this also originates from a cockpit from an airplane. These parts originate from a radio of a Messerschmitt BF-109. The Messerschmitt was one of the most advanced fighters when it first appeared in 1939. It formed the backbone of the Luftwaffe's fighting force and was in operation until 1945. You can see a major position over here. Could have been a barrack actually. You can see the perimeter right here. And right alongside it, Jeff actually just found a stick hand grenade but the practice version, because there's these holes in it. And these were used for, uh, for practice purposes, so there was never any gunpowder charge in this. So that's quite a special find. There you go. Jeffrey found something that is recognizable, for me at least, perhaps also for my frequent viewers. Look at this, it's a name tag. This has been placed on a storage locker or something similar. And it says Oberth. So this is the, the last name of a, a German soldier. <laughs> it's a really personal find. And yeah, since it's made from plastic, you will not find this with a metal detector. But since we are digging in a dump, you can expect these kind of relics. Can't get enough of our work and want to see more? Bonus scenes from this episode are now available on Patreon. Rob and Jeff have another one of these Bakelite bottles. First I, I said it was weapon oil, but actually this is a substance to decontaminate weapons actually from uh, poison attacks. One of the things to find in dumps like this on my list are uh, beer mugs, like the big half liter German beer mugs. And uh, well, Jeffrey found a couple right now. There's one already right there. And it's almost complete. And there's two more there, I think he said. Yeah. Is this one complete? Oh. Yeah, it's complete. <laughs> and the handle oh, is missing. No, it's, it's complete. Well, that's sad. Unfortunately, we cannot merge these two together to make a complete one, but... <sighs> the fourth one, wow. We haven't really found any WHW badges yet in this dump, but we usually do, as you might know by now. And Rob just pulled out the first one after quite some hours of digging in this dump. It's a glass one. We found those before as well. Not this particular type. Did you say there was a swastika on there as well? There on top, you can see the eco with swastika. I haven't seen this particular one before. As you can see, we're working alongside each other right now. And I'm standing with Ray here at this sifter. So Rob found one WHW bed somewhere over there. We are digging there right now. And look right there, what do we see? We have another glass WHW. And interestingly enough, there were so many of these WHW badges. But this is again, one of those glass ones. Let's see if you can see what sort of landmark is on there. It looks like a castle, right? That's, that's a really pretty version. That's a new one for me. Yeah, yeah, I also don't think I've seen that one before, this particular type. That's a beauty, man. Happy with that one. What did you just find, Rob? Belt buckle? Yeah, baits missing. But... Yeah, there's nothing on it. It's an aluminum version. We should brush this up and see. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can it's see the, the yeah. details. Yeah. yeah, there's usually on Wehrmacht equipment there's this clear pattern of dots on it as you can see everybody's gathered up right now because ray just shouted i got a shoulder pip and it's a really really nice one well you gotta really look carefully to see it let me just zoom in for you a little bit there there we go wow that is a really pretty one so this was placed on the shoulder to indicate the rank the more a soldier had on his shoulders the higher the rank would be well my buddy rob just pulled a very special button out of the sifter and we don't know this particular type let's see if we can discover more when we clean it <coughs> there we go there is writing on there it's quite difficult to read but maybe we can do a google search right so rob just pointed out that this button actually says new zealand 
I don't think the Australian army was here to be honest, but that's that's really weird. What is that button doing here? We're on the Western Front to be precise, so it would be really interesting if soldiers from New Zealand were here. New Zealand army? Yeah. New Zealand forces. Well, maybe we can find out what they did exactly in the war and I'll make sure to post that information right here. We found out that New Zealand provided personnel for service in the Royal Air Force, also called the RAF. This Allied Air Force took over the airfield when the German army abandoned it. Probably this is why pilots from New Zealand were here. And there we go. No need to point it out. Here are the, uh, the barracks where the pilots have been residing that flew on this airfield. So now it's just foundations, but uh, there were definitely some buildings here. And there's many, many of these kind of structures in this forest, making it a very interesting historical place. I just discovered a dump pit. There was a lot of trash here, like aluminum stuff. Maybe they used it to fix the airplanes. Some bottles came out. As you can see, um, Ray actually pulled out this very neat toothbrush and also a perfume bottle. I think this is again the Kölnisch Wasser, the very famous German perfume. But guess what? Look at this edge here. That's the plate. And we haven't found a complete plate yet, so we really hope this might be it. Let me just get you down there. We're gonna expose this together because I already spotted a very little eagle down there. Let's see what we're gonna encounter here. Yeah, 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 it's gonna be one, it's gonna be one. Will this be the first complete piece? Look at that, guys. There we go, it's seeing sunlight again for the first time. Well, I can already see, this plate is from 1941, so it's quite old. So let's see, is this a complete plate? I really hope so. I cannot believe this. We've dug up so many broken porcelain pieces. Okay, are you guys ready? Oh, we got a complete plate, guys. We did it. <laughs> that is a really awesome find. Really happy with that one. Well, if there's one, maybe there's more. <laughs> so yeah, the dump is getting bigger and bigger. More objects coming out. This bottle with some. There, the, uh, the paper is all still intact. You can still read that. And we found this civilian cup, which is quite a funny one, because it says the Hausfrau, which means the housewife. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe I should bring this home to my girlfriend and surprise her. Right, the hole is empty. We're uh, backfilling it. Really a uh, nice little dump hole. The bags are packed. We're going home. I'm really happy that we returned to the Luftwaffe airfield. Thank you all for watching, especially my patrons. Your name will appear on the screen right now. If you want to get an exclusive look behind the scenes, make sure to check us out on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Cheers.